This is a quick plea whether you are new to the channel or you've watched a handful of videos and you are not subscribed, like most of the people who watch the channel, go ahead, click subscribe now, ring the little bell. It helps more people see the videos and we are so close to 3,000 subscribers. Anyway, on with the technical. So in the Northern Hemisphere, the warmer months are upon us. We've had a European heat wave with temperatures in the high 30s and even 40s. And how hot was it in Northumberland yesterday? I think it got up to 18 degrees Celsius. Never mind. With the seasonal weather comes the seasonal challenges. And one of these in cattle is summer mastitis, also known as dry cow mastitis. This is typically a moderate to severe mastitis, most commonly seen between the months of June and September. As the alternative name suggests, it is most common in dry cows and heifers yet to calve, plus you can see it rarely in calves. Sometimes mild cases can go undetected. This may explain why some animals, after they calve for the first time, may have a non-functioning or blind quarter. Although this mastitis can end up being a mixed infection, the most common primary cause is a bug called Truparella pyogenes, or T. pyogenes for short. Crucially, this is spread not directly by cow to cow. Crucially, this is spread between cattle by biting flies. Hence, this seasonal association. June to September in the UK tend to be the months of peak fly population and activity. In really hot weather, when cattle might cluster together for shade or near a water source, it's possible to see a spike in cases, not least because these shady or damp spots are prime locations for flies. The mastitis presents, as you might expect, a moderate to severe mastitis to present. A hot, hard, swollen, and painful udder with a foul-smelling yellow, often blood-tinged secretion from one or more of the quarters which are affected. You may also see a lot of flies around the affected udder attracted by and feeding off of that discharge. It's not unusual for farmers to ring us up and describe these cases as being lame. That's because these cattle are trying to swing legs round their affected udders to avoid hitting them because they are so painful. Plus, they may display some of the more non-specific signs of an infection, a high temperature, a lack of appetite, lethargy, separation from the rest of the herd, and otherwise being quite unwell or off color. Cows can get very sick with this if they go septicemic, leading to a loss of pregnancy or even dying themselves. For this reason, it is sensible to phone your vet if you get a case of summer mastitis. They will be able to advise you on the most sensible treatment. Often this will incorporate an anti-inflammatory to reduce pain and to combat the fever, an injectable antibiotic, plus or minus an intramammary antibiotic. The cow, if she's very sick, might want some fluids and energy as well. And it is often advisable to strip out that infected quarter to remove as much of that pus and discharge as possible. If you're going to do this, it's very sensible to collect that discharge in a bucket rather than leaving it in the crush or on the ground. The reason for this is this is a perfectly infectious soup that's going to attract other flies, which could then very feasibly take that infection onto other udders of other cows. The best thing to do, as I said, is to collect that into some sort of container, which you can then clean and disinfect. For the same reason, if possible, it is also advisable to isolate that animal from the herd until the mastitis is cured. Unfortunately, it is unusual to retain the function on an affected quarter, but remember here, things could get a lot worse, abortion or even death of the animal affected. In terms of prevention, this is going to incorporate trying to plan your grazing over the summer to avoid really high risk areas during those hotter months. Of course, this decision is going to have to integrate other considerations like grass availability, but also shade and water provision. Fly eggs typically hatch from sandy soils in June and July, and fly activity tends to be greater where the air is still. So if you have fields or paddocks which have a natural breeze, this is going to be an advantage. The use of teat sealants and intramammary antibiotics when cows are dried off during these higher risk months may also be a really sensible option, one to be discussed with your vet 
It's worth noting if you go down this route that some of these preparations may only last three or four weeks. And so to provide an adequate duration of cover, they may need reinfused later on. Fly repellents licensed for cattle, often with the same or similar active ingredients as those licensed for sheep, can be really useful if we can't avoid these high risk areas during the high risk months. But these drugs are coming under increasing scrutiny as we know they aren't ecologically benign. As with sheep, we know that some individuals seem to be more attracted to or susceptible to flies. It could be worth noting if you're potentially selecting a replacement from an affected animal. So that is summer mastitis, a really important reason to check dry stock regularly during those summer months. That means we're going to pick up cases early and avoid the damage. Plus, we can think about potential ways to protect that udder. That's it for this one. I've got some really good vlogs coming of me out in the field. If you don't want to miss those, don't forget to click subscribe, ring the little bell, give the video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Other than that, I will see you next time.